Okay, I'm Bill Whale. What I'm doing is I'm showing you guys th these boys here. They got a Hobby King skipper. We're at Joe now, and they, they want to fly in the lake. And one thing I know about the skipper is it is susceptible to damage at the tail section. So what they saw with mine is we have it fiberglassed, and you can see it's super rigid. It doesn't bend. If it has a crash, it's not going to come forward, tear tear up the arms here mess up your servo. This fiberglassing will work with any plane if you have a glider or whatever. So what we're going to do, you can see here, it's bendy, which affects your performance too, because you know you have the motor torque a little bit, it will bend. That also bends your rudder. This will not bend once you get done with the job. So it's, I figure it's about an hour's worth of work to do it right, and then you got to let it cure overnight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn that plane into that design right there. All you got to do, you go to Hobby King or any place that has fiberglass cloth and you want to get the finest cloth, very fine. So you choose, what if they got the fine setting, you get that. You don't need the rough stuff. You want it to be light and you don't want to have a whole lot of extra weight. Plus, if you go with the fine stuff, it really gets applied nice. What you do, first of all, you'll see the ends are already a little bit frayed when you get it. That's normal when they cut. It's always going to be like that. So what I do is I don't even unfold it. I just take the whole thing and I chop the ends off and that's just waste. Okay, you're not even going to use that. Then from there you can unfold it and cut out pieces you like, but I already know what I'm doing with this. So I already know my piece size. So what I do is I keep it already just stacked all together just the way it is. And this is about the width that I'm going to want. So then what I do is I cut it like so. And then you get a whole bunch of pieces all at one time. Now it's a little windy here, so what I'm doing is I'm going to put that to the side, cover it over. And now by doing it this way, I then put my ruler on this end and cut that. And you just throw that little bit away, then you take this on this end and you do the same and then what you end up with just by a few cuts you end up with a whole bunch of pieces that are identical then I'll put that down there then what we do and I always recommend this I know it looks a little goofy but I put on rubber gloves unless you like the feeling of having plastic fingers then by all means don't put the rubber gloves on some people like plastic fingers but I can't stand it. If you're the kind of person that says, I rub my fingers together and it all goes away, and you actually believe that, hey, who am I to say, okay? Maybe it's that way with you. Then, I get out just a regular popsicle stick. And I, I personally find that this brand is the best. This epoxy finishing resin is what I love. That stuff works phenomenal. This makes it easy because you got two different ingredients. You mix them together, they become active. You'll notice that basically you're going to want them to be even. So what I do is even before I start I compare them. You see how the two are level? That's great. So then you're good to go. Then what you do is you put them in. I'm going to use a lot so I'm just going to squirt a lot in there. Then what I'm doing is I layer it over here like this. I let them two settle. And then I see, are they equal? And I'm looking, this one looks like there's a little, am I right, a little bit more? Mm -hmm. So, I just give it a little bit more, and then put it back, and you want them to be equal. You can even start stirring while you're waiting for them to settle. Now they look right, so you're good to go. So then, you put your caps back on. Make sure you put the right cap on the right bottle. See, the black goes with the black. If you don't do that, you will actually glue the cap to your bottle. So, <laughs> the one's not a good idea. Put those back in, you're good. You only need that bottle of finishing resin will be like for many jobs, many jobs. Then you mix it up really good. It's really liquidy at first, so it's not a problem to mix it up. Take your popsicle stick and get rid of that. And now you're good to go. I like these brushes here. Instead of regular brushes, I like the sponge brushes. And the reason why 
is because when you're applying it to the, let's say if I have um, fiberglass there, I can just pat the fiberglass right onto the, um, and push it down. You want, you, I'm putting down a layer initially, so when I lay the fiberglass on, there's some resin sitting on the, the foam board that will absorb into the fiberglass and, and bond the foam board to the fiberglass. But then from then on, I'm gonna do a couple more layers and then what we're doing between those layers is I am making the fiberglass like pancaking and I'm, I'm tapping that, that brush down and I'm getting the, it's almost like a fabric, the fiberglass fabric to absorb at each layer the, um, the epoxy. Now you don't want to have it that it's 90% epoxy and 10% fiberglass. Right yep. now you see we're applying the different layers. What I'm doing is I, I put a piece down, I see how long I want to make it. See how it doesn't quite fit? You're looking at it like, oh, it doesn't quite fit. Well, that's not a problem. Because what I do is I slash the fiberglass at certain parts so it bends around whatever you're forming to. And then when you hit it with the resin, it will lay down. And even if you have a little wrinkle or something, that's not a big deal. It really isn't. The big thing that you want to do is, you can see over here that I have a little bit of dry. I have a little bit of dry, and what you want to do is make sure that it's completely saturated at each level. Because if you don't get each layer to be saturated, you're going to have hollow points in the fiberglass and it's going to be less strong but if the fiberglass resin fully saturates each layer and each layer is built on each other like a big sandwich then each layer is providing support to the other if you have rubber gloves you can even get in there and push down and by the way would it have to be conform exactly to that perpendicular not really because the wind's going to be flowing over it doesn't matter whatever shape you make around that is how the wind will fly over top of it so you can even take an advantage of, like if you had a model that has really rough edges, you can, you can um, smooth them out a little bit with your fiberglass while you're strengthening your model. So here, what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece around an edge, which will not, um, let me see that for a second. It will not basically fold the whole way over unless I were to cut it here. And then you'll see by doing that now with the wind it's a little more difficult here at Jill Hill and uh, it'll go completely over the edge if you had wing pieces this one is not susceptible to that you got some spars in there you're fine but if you did have an area that was weak you could even run it beyond that a little bit and give yourself some support so wherever you think you need support that's where you run your fiberglass what I'm doing is I'm providing a wide base to this um, rudder here and um, the motor mount because to be honest it's a little soft there and also it's, it's not that great on impact. And by, it's adding, I would say, I don't know, you might be adding a half an ounce once it's dry to the whole weight of the plane, but you're, you're adding some significant strength to the plane. And at the same time, the fact that it is more rigid, it'll fly better. Oops. Now, what I did, I went one way, and now I'm going the other way. So I lay it on there nice and easy. And then with the spongy type brush, you can just slap that down, use the sponge to get it all nice and even. Sometimes, if you want to, you can also use a blade along here but the only thing is you can't pull on it too much because you'll affect your um... yeah I almost have to use a pair of scissors the problem is these guys here are a little and hey Joey tell you what we got some good wind here don't we and, well, so then we're just applying it to both sides. I'm wrapping it around both ways, but at the same time, I'm connecting with the base. So I'm providing like perpendicular support. 
if you really felt like you needed, okay, like if you had a really high stress area, which this isn't, but if you really felt like you need it, you could even wrap the fiberglass around, and maybe we'll do that just to show you. Who knows, you know, they might really take a hit on this thing, and they might appreciate that. Basically, in that case, you have to rip off the whole end of the plane to, uh, to actually wreck your tail, which it could be done, but it'd be a lot harder to do than under the original version of the skipper, which is quite easy to do. So, and then get rid of these. If you need to do some more cutting, you gotta get rid of your gloves because they're gonna be covered in resin and then your fingers are going to actually stick to the cloth, so you can't have that. So what you do is you just go back to the beginning here, you just do the same thing I did before, which is you just cut whatever width that you want. Then put that on top. This is a little sloppier than in my, <laughs> at my desk at home. With the wind, it does make it a little sloppier. But, and you can actually use those little pieces if you ever did want to, but I mean, you could keep them in a bag in a Ziploc. But, um, or, you know, like this right here, this whole pack is like a dollar. It's not a big deal. It's not gonna cost you a whole lot. So, you don't really technically need to save those. If you save those little pieces and you move them around a lot, they tend to fray anyways. So it's best to cut them and then use them right away. Yeah. So, as you can see, we did the, we're gonna put it out here in light so you can see good. We put fiberglass the whole length of the tail. We went, wrapped it around underneath. We went to the other side, did the same thing. That's gonna make this tail totally rigid tomorrow that it's not gonna bend. And plus it'll help it with uh, structural integrity. Um, you could wait a couple of hours and you'll see it'll be solid. You'll think, okay, that's ready to fly. If you ask me, I'll wait eight hours. So eight hours, wait overnight, guys. Don't like do it too soon because if it does bend while, you know, while it's still not solid, it might not have the structural integrity you need. Okay, and enjoy.